Hi, I'm Evan Reinheimer. In this video, I'm going to answer some of the most common questions that I get asked about kite aerial photography. Thanks for watching. In this video, I'm going to be answering some of the most frequently asked questions that I get asked about my kite aerial photography. Before I even get started, if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel. It'll really help me out and you'll be notified of future content. If you're familiar with my work, you know that all of my photographs are taken using an old-fashioned single-line kite to lift my camera up into the sky to take unique aerial photographs of places all over the world. I realize this is a pretty strange way to take aerial photographs, especially these days. Because of this, when I'm exhibiting my work, I get asked a lot of questions about my technique. So I'm going to answer some of those questions in this video. How much wind do I need to get a kite to lift my camera up into the air? Well, I have a wide variety of kites that range in size and shape. Each kite is meant to be used in a different range of wind speeds. I have kites that will lift my camera in winds as low as 4 or 5 miles an hour, all the way up through 35 miles an hour plus. A basic rule of thumb for choosing a kite to use, the bigger the kite, the less wind it needs to fly. So if the wind is really gentle, I'll use a bigger kite. As the wind speed increases, I'll use smaller and smaller kites. More importantly is the consistency of the wind. If the wind is very gentle, but consistent, my camera will be very steady in the air. If the wind is very strong, but consistent, the kite and the camera will also be very stable in the air. Stability is really important in kite aerial photography. Can you see what your camera sees while it's up on your kite? I get asked this question a lot, and the answer is yes. The basics of how it works is I put a little wireless video camera on my camera rig, and that sends a wireless video signal down to me on the ground, and it allows me to view what the camera sees. How do you compose your photographs once your camera is up on your kite? The camera rig that I built to hold my camera while it's on my kite has a little electronic servo motor at the top and that allows me to aim my camera to any direction using a wireless remote control from the ground. How do you choose what you want to photograph? Generally, I don't just happen upon places that I want to photograph. Almost every single one of my photographs is planned out way in advance of photographing. I also keep a sketchbook full of ideas for things I want to photograph in the future. Not very good at drawing, so the drawings are not that good, um, but they give me an idea for how I want the composition to look and how I want the final photograph to come out, and that gives me a base of where to start designing my photograph. Another reason that I like to plan my photographs out well in advance is because of the nature of what I do involving the wind and the weather. I need to plan my trips and my travel around when I'm going to have the optimal amount of wind in a location and also when the sun is going to be pointing the right direction for me to photograph in the way that I want. So a lot of my photographs involve a lot of research, sometimes years of research and planning, just to take that one photograph. How do you transport your kites when you're traveling? This is another question that I'm asked a lot. Not so much having to do with how I do the kite aerial photography, but more of a logistical thing of how I transport my kites when I'm traveling. Well, if the kite has a frame, it goes in this tube right here. I put a strap on this tube like that so that I can carry it over my shoulder. And then the kites go inside the tube. There's a, a top that can be closed here so that when I travel, nothing slides out. And then the kites go in their bags like this. The tube helps protect the frame of the kite from being damaged in transit. And I can fit several kites in here into a pretty compact thing that's easy to carry. Usually airlines will let me on with this as carry-on. Once in a while I've had to check it. Um, I actually have some, I don't know if you can see that, but there's some Hello Kitty fragile stickers on here that I got when I was in Taiwan. Some of the kites that I have don't have a frame. They're soft flow form type kites like this. This I can just clip to my backpack that I carry and carry it around like that. I can also pack this and check luggage. Um, it's alright if it gets squished. You know, there's nothing really that can break in here. So these are a bit easier to travel with. But 
When I travel, I do take a variety of framed kites and soft kites like this so that I have a good range of wind covered. I'll go over my whole fleet of kites that I use in a different video, so also check the uh, comments of this video for that one. What do you use to transport your camera gear and camera rig while you're traveling? Another question not so much to do with kite aerial photography, but more the logistical side of things, um, is how I carry all my camera gear with me. Well, I have this really awesome backpack that I got here. Um, I got it from a company called PackSafe. They make really awesome, really comfortable backpacks and travel gear that also has a lot of anti-theft devices built into them. It's a really great bag and I really like it. Um, it's probably the best camera bag I ever have owned. And it's not even a camera bag, it's actually a, a travel carry-on bag that I bought. And then inside the bag, here, I keep a lot of things. I keep, you know, my gloves, keep my hands from getting cut online, keep the actual kite line here, have the uh, remote control that I use, and then my cameras get put into this Pelican case here with my camera rig that I use to attach the camera to the kite line. Why don't you just use a drone to do your aerial photography? This question has become by far the most common question that I get asked when exhibiting my work just over the past couple years as the popularity of drones has decreased. And I actually have what I think is a really good, really long, thorough explanation of why I choose to use a kite still instead of using a drone. I'm going to address that in a separate video to this one because I can really elaborate on that topic quite a bit and I feel like that topic deserves its own video. So again, check the comments to this video for the link to see why I don't use a drone to do my photography. Thanks again for watching. I hope I've answered some of your questions. If you still have a question, please leave a comment to this video and I'll answer your question in the comment section. And if it's really good, maybe I'll make a video about it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel as well. Thanks again for watching.